Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and we have had a, uh, a pullback over the last uh, few days. Um, we were at 2.7 something trillion, now we're at 2.57. Bitcoin's pulled back to 68. Look at XRP, it's now at about 62.7. Um, I literally rolled over, well, actually first I wanted to show you this, just in um, 3.35 billion worth of Bitcoin and Ethereum options expire today. So that is today, that's as in today. I don't know if that's the cause of the pullback or what, but I literally woke up just like this at 3 a.m. and I bought the XRP dip. <laughs> I just thought to, I, I just happened to wake up and I saw that the market was down and I bought more XRP. Okay, more Bitcoin hype. The score, uh, you know, one to 10 in terms of the success rate of the Bitcoin ETFs and th how things have gone so far. Is this just overwhelmingly successful or what's your consideration? Yeah, 10, 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10. Um, out even of 10. the worst, okay. even the one with the lo lowest assets, BTCW, um, it's still a tremendously successful product yeah. by pretty much That's any crazy. measure that you could think of for something that just launched a couple of minutes ago. And then, I mean, a couple of months ago, and you go up to something like IBIT and FBTC, I mean, they're smashing yeah. records all over the place. Like this whole group is just smashing every record we've ever seen. It's crazy. Uh, I heard um, a couple of analysts on yesterday that were looking at this particular situation. One of them said something that was kind of interesting. And that was the whole idea that this may be you know, uncharted water that the street has never seen before, and they don't even really know how to react to it. So I was surprised by that statement. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like a new uh, regime, I guess you could say. Like, yeah. uh, right, people don't know how to... Uh, re respond to it. For the most part, anyone looking at this objectively is saying what I'm saying, right? This is a smashing success. It's extremely successful. Okay. Now I want you to think this thing through a little bit, okay? I want you to think before I show you this, <clears throat> because we are, the adults in the room are directly over the target. I want you to think about what's going on. What do we see? So we've got a U.S. government who is th over $30 trillion in debt. We've got a, the, the entire fiat system with the U.S. dollars, the world reserve currency is built on trust. It's built on this idea that everybody trusts that the U.S. government will pay them back. The BRICS formation is an obvious uh, indication that that trust is lacking and that all these countries are getting together because they question, they don't trust the U.S. anymore. And so... What, what would a United States like that need to do? They would need to, first of all, they would need to create something <clears throat> that would be a hedge against people losing faith and hitting the exits. I believe Bitcoin is that hedge. I don't know if the U.S. created it. I don't know if they created it in conjunction with other countries. But I fully believe that that's what the Bitcoin ETFs are about. It's to let people have a release valve so they'll go there. Meanwhile, the COMEX, U.S., through the COMEX, suppresses the, the gold and silver prices. They have been for, for decades. You've seen all the articles. J.P. Morgan will get busted for spoof, spoofing. Who knows how much money they've made. Let's say they made $3 billion, but then they get fined by the SEC, you know, $50 million. That's how the game works. And the truth is they're probably working for the government when they're doing this. But if you want to understand the bigger picture, what the adults understand, this is what, it's not the green candles, it's not the cartoon monkeys, it's not um, all this plastic cartoon stuff. These are all, it's not even Bitcoin. These are all the distractions. Because this is for, this is for all the marbles. This is for um, this new system. And so there's a lot more going on and what I do is I just stick to what makes sense. What makes sense to me, I'll tell you what makes sense to me. What makes sense to me 
is that if XRP is everything we think it is, which I'm, I'm, I'm more confident today than I was in 2013, if it is what we think it is, it, it along with, and I'll show you some evidence of this, it along with all the others that are actually going to be used in this new system, not just for speculation, but actually be used, they would be not necessarily held back the same way the precious metals are being held back, but they would not really take off until they had regulatory clarity. And that's what's being worked on right now. That would be your flip the switch moment. But if, if you want to know what the adults know, watch this. And, and I think there is a... By the way, this guy, right, this, the clip that I showed to my group earlier in the week that was, um, it was censored, not in one place on X, but in three or four places on X. They had literally censored out, he's saying more here, but he's saying the same thing. He's talking about the COMEX, the Western price suppression of commodities and precious metals. This was censored, so watch it while you can. And and I think there is a a, a strong probability that a lot of, of what's happening to, to the bond market, to the debt market, is a, a function of lack of trust. And I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that you need somebody to buy the bonds in order to, to continue to finance the debt. And this is all what talk, centered around interest rates, right? I mean, um, and the question really is, who can we count on right now to, to buy our debt? And the countries that predominantly have been buying our debt, I believe have shifted into buying tangible assets, not just gold and silver, but copper, um, zinc, lead, you name it. Anything that you would need to build an infrastructure, I believe that's what they are doing. And when you look at the performance of gold over the last 25 years, it has outpaced that of the bond market tremendously. It's outpaced the S&P. We've talked about this before, but what it does, look, America's ability to pay its debt, I think, is becoming a concern for the nations around the globe. And, you know, right now, uh, those foreign nations own almost $8 trillion worth of our treasuries, and I think they're getting nervous, and, and maybe they don't trust us anymore. So when you say that this movement is different, well, it's different to me in two ways. The biggest is that, at least in terms of gold, it's blown through all resistance. There's nothing above it. It's never been this high. Where does it stop? And should it actually have been much higher to begin with? I don't know. And I do think it will drag silver uh, with it. It will pull it with it. Um, typically, as people have talked about forever, gold goes first, silver goes further in terms of a percentage gain. But in my heart of hearts, I believe what we are seeing is a lack of trust that is manifesting itself in higher commodity prices, in particular gold right now, because I think these central banks around the world view gold as a safer bet, one that doesn't have sanction and confiscation risk, doesn't have default risk, it doesn't have any of these risks associated with the government who has proven that they have no problem in, in cutting people off or cutting countries off from the system if they don't align ideologically with the way that we do. So I think that's why it feels different this time. This is central bank buying to me and big central bank buying that, you know, you can only manipulate a market by pushing in the direction that it is going and to try to hold this back I think is as dumb as a mud wall and you'll end up seeing companies that will try and and could very well likely end up in in the dust heap you know uh, uh, history's dust heap of those that tried and failed so not a smart time to be shorting this market in this environment in this world i guess is all i'm trying to say yes and as you pointed out we did have more central bank gold buying uh, was let us balance that against what we see here on the cot report which showed big increase in short the article was talking about a new international currency right uh, and what he said were two things but the second point i'm going to get to in a moment i think really answers your question the first is the idea of a currency he said and there'll be two baskets one basket is with uh, one basket is of national currencies of all countries involved in the process, like the SDR. 
special drawing rights, but with more clear and understandable criteria. The second basket are commodities. If you have two baskets and we create the new currency as an index of commodities and national currencies, and we have a mechanism for reserves according to the mathematical model, that will be very stable, stable and convenient. Okay, so they want a new system, right? Everyone's been talking about the new settlement currency that hopefully that they bring up to to a vote or, or come back to the drawing. They went to the drawing board, they're gonna come back and present at the October meeting. We've been consistent in talking about that. But the second part that he brought up in this interview, I have been saying it now for at least a year, and I think it's bound to happen. Look, the LME, the London Metals Exchange, was purchased by the Chinese, and that's primarily a, a, a platform of um, base metals, copper, zinc, lead, that kind of stuff. They, I think they do some precious metals, but mostly base metals. This is not just precious metals. They are siphoning and sucking everything that they can that that is, isn't nailed down they are substituting dollar holdings for assets for commodities and you know just as a as a parable you know you look at you look at the wealthy people in this country they they own assets and i think that's what the chinese and the BRICS nations are doing but the second part is the most important thing and he says um he says the BRICS have have um well, the second part is price. Let's just say that. The second part is price. He says, for the moment, price is determined by Western specula speculation. We produce these commodities, we consume them, but we do not have our own price mechanism, which will balance supply and demand. During the COVID panic, the price fell for oil to nearly zero. Actually, it was negative 40 a barrel. It's impossible to make any strategic planning for economic development if you do not control the prices of basic commodities. Price formation with this new currency should get rid of Western exchanges of commodities. This game that we are playing to suppress the commodities, to make our system, our bond market and our currency system seem stronger than it is, not only is allowing these countries, as we are just said, to accumulate and pick dry the shelves of all of the commodities from base metals to precious metals to soft commodities like corn and soybeans and all of this stuff and wheat that they're stock uh, piling. In fact, they just brought up the idea of a new BRICS grain exchange for the exact same reason that, you know, they promote, they produce more grain on a per capita than the rest of the world. And why are they beholden to the COMEX market that sets the price? What you are going to see, in my opinion, is the foolishness by the West who continues to suppress the price of metals for their own greed and stupidity. Maybe they're being told to do it to support the bond market, to support the dollar, to support this stupid uh, illusion that the dollar or the emperor is, is actually clothed, but we know he's not. Um, but I think what is going to happen is they will use that against us, as I've been very consistent in saying, they're using this suppression against us by bleeding dry the exchanges, but they are preparing. And, the, and this is the, the Russian finance minister Totally knows it. You I know, know this is long, but this, if you want to really understand where we are, this is what it's about. All know it. And that is that the Western price setting mechanism, the Western COMEX prices are a bunch of crap. And they're going to use it against us until no one is foolish enough, i.e. the brain dead money managers, to do this, to take the other side. And when there is no one offering metal or commodities at the Western price any longer, you will see a shift, whether it be to Moscow, whether it be to the Shanghai Gold Exchange or to Dubai, and it's coming. So this back and forth folly of rinse, wash and repeat where the brain dead money managers continue to fall for the same sucker game where the, the commercial speculate or suck them into speculation, then smack the price down as the price rises will end poorly until it does frustrating as hell. But when you got the Russian finance minister openly saying, we see what they're doing and we're going to change that, it's going to happen. And I don't know if it's this rally or the next, but each time that they continue to suppress the price in, in what is a immoral fashion and, and one that is messing with mother nature, it's only going to exacerbate the final outcome, Chris. And I mean that, brother. I truly do. Right now, we're, they're, we're playing right into their hand. Let's suppress the price, and so they can gobble up every ounce across the globe on any exchange that's dumb enough to sell it. And when that day ends, 
when no one's going to sell it for that make-believe price. Just like that, you're going to see another system, another exchange, another country take over for what the COMEX was exposed to being, and that is fraudulent. And I, I think, yeah, maybe we will see another rinse, wash, and repeat where this rally, which seems so strong and substantive, is actually smoke and mirrors, uh, you know, one that was uh, fostered by the commercial banks. I guess we'll have to see, but if I were a commercial bank or a board member, I'd say, what the hell are you guys doing? You are playing with really, really dangerous fire. And maybe they should go back and listen to your interview with Bart Chilton talking about the fate of Bear Stearns when they did the same stupid thing. So anyways, I digress. I don't know what tomorrow or next week will bring, Dangerous but I can tell fire. you we're getting much, much closer to, to the COMEX and the Western price setting system, um, I think, being exchanged for one that is more realistic to the countries who appreciate, understand, produce, and consume the commodities that we're valuing that they're accumulating. Man, what an important clip. Now, um, check this out. Democrat senators are writing the SEC chair Gensler requesting he deny other crypto ETFs. Meanwhile, Uphold is now teasing again. Martin, um, Dr. Martin Hisbach from uh, Uphold the other day teased an XRP ETF. Now Uphold the company is teasing his tease. Does Uphold know something about a coming XRP ETF? I don't know. Then we've got Egreg Crypto um, giving us a macro go-go update. Um, he, he's talking about how we, um, uh, let's see, XRP must not close below 58 to 60 cents. I think we're at 62 cents when I last checked. Zooming in, um, let's see, XRP indicating... Indeed, shaping a W pattern, indicating a potential breakout. Measure and move pattern, uh, let's see, $1.17. Stay steady. These minor pr price aggregations are just appetizer. The main course promises digital double-digit gains. I like the sound of that. Um, let me, th I think I may, may stop right there. And then, let's see, I'm going to cover some of this stuff in the next video. Um, in DAIXRP.com, what I'm going to talk to you about is, well, first of all, I'm, uh, I'm now, you know, I originally formed DAIXRP.com to show you things that I just will not talk about out here because they're borderline dangerous to talk about. Well, that's what I've got in store for you in DAIXRP.com today. Um, now, you know, there's some things that you see, um, some of them daily, but when things get really hairy, we go into DAIXRP.com because, look, I want the bad guys out there to know I, I'm just not going to walk over the, the ledge here. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not going to do it. Um, I'm not going to go uh, too, too far because um, I don't want those kind of problems. So anyway, I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family. Here we go into the danger zone.